Welcome to live stream number 116. My name is Lars Christensen. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join today's live stream. Now, today's live stream topic is create cool patterns. I'm going to talk a little bit about knurling, and I put it in there for 3D printers, but this is not just for guys who 3D prints, though that I think that, uh, that those guys are going to be excited about seeing some of the techniques in here. Actually, uh, if you know all this stuff that I'm going to be showing today, then um, you are a cat ninja and you uh, you know your stuff. There's some interesting thinking a little bit outside the box. All right, I can already see we got people in here, so um, no uh, no idea in waiting. Let's get to it. So I kind of like breaking this this up to a couple of different sections. So the first one is just cool pattern. Um, I just wanted to show um, so. A friend of mine reached out to me not long ago with a 3D printer and um, needs to 3D print something like knurled or cool pattern texture on their part. So let's just go up here and uh, I like to start out from scratch as you know. Uh, so let's just make a block 200 by 200 millimeters, something like this. And let's just hit a Q for extrude out and just give it some kind of a thickness. This is not important. The flat plate. Now, this guy was trying to do this on a pretty big area. Uh, so if I go in here right now and I right click and say I'm going to create a sketch here. I was going to hit alpha line. Let's just create a line down here. It doesn't really matter how long. Let me just make a somewhat of a triangular shape here. Something like that. Let's fully define that. Symmetry, my, one of my favorite favorite ones there. Let's do a uh, let's do some dimensions from here to here is probably good. Let's make it ten and let's make this here. I don't know three looks good. Let's put a angle on here and this kind of like actually fits pretty well with what we were talking about yesterday. Okay, so this is kind of fully defined. Let's hit Q. And uh, let's just cut that all the, whoops. <laughs> let's just cut that all the way through uh, the part here. So we're gonna say through all, right? So now we kind of like got a little uh, V-shape through the part. Now uh, we're gonna go in and, uh, and use the pattern. So create pattern, rectangular pattern. Remember we were playing in here before. Now just for this one here, I'm gonna select the faces because uh, I want to show you a cool trick about that. Um, and direction, I'm going to put this direction. We're going to go this way. I like spacing for some reason. Um, minus six, and let's see how it looks if we put in like 30 of these. Boom, right? Looks pretty cool, pretty cool textured. Now, um, but this is not cool enough if you have a, if you have a 3D printer uh, you're trying to make some some cool texture. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna circle a pattern. Um, one that first one we created. Uh, so we're gonna circle a pattern. That one uh, we are going to revolve around the center line right there. Now by default it gives us it always defaults to three. Uh, did you know that you can actually change this? It don't have to be full. You can actually do it to an angle. So I can say 90 degrees and I just want the one we created and this new copy. So two, hit OK. And now I get one going all the way down there. So now we're going to pattern this one. Um, now, if I do that, create pattern, rectangular pattern, still using faces. That's a lot of different faces to select. Don't forget that if we go into the top view and we do a from left to right, we will select all the faces versus escape. Oops, I didn't want to go out of it. Versus, so from left to right, we'll select anything within the box where from right to left, we'll select everything the box touches. Remember that? 
So look at this, 246 entities were selected because I did from, from right to left in yellow box, gonna select everything versus selecting from left to right, if you didn't know this. 62 entities, so I just saved myself from that. Um, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing as did before. Direction is this way. We are going to uh, do spacings. We're gonna do six millimeters step between that and we're gonna create 30 of these and hit okay now when i do this do, 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 look what happens to fusion see how fusion right now kind of you get a tendency to think uh oh why did uh why did the the thing just suddenly uh suddenly go ahead and uh and it's just sitting there well this is extremely important to understand when it comes to solid modeling software like Fusion 360. And that is that right now, Fusion is absolutely calculating every single step um, that there is between every single face that's being created uh, on this pattern. Um, and, you know, this pattern is not really complex in per se, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just some, some lines. Um, but in, in, in theory, there we go. In theory, I mean, it's thinking about every single little face, point, line. Everything in here is right now calculated by, by Fusion. So when you're looking at this, uh, this is actually a pretty cool pattern, isn't it? Um, so when you're looking at this kind of like, I guess this is, we could <clears throat> call this a flat knurled uh, pattern on this block, um, you know, not too bad, but you saw how Fusion had to spend a little bit of horsepower trying to, uh, to, figure, to figure this out. Um, so I'm going to show you a trick on how we can, we can do better than this, or a little tip on how we can do better than that. Now, what if uh, we just go back and delete these patterns that we just spent all this time making. And let's go back to the original one here. What if we wanted to do that on a 45? Like what if we wanted to rotate? We could have caused and taken that whole pattern and rotate it. But what if we at this point decided that we're gonna go in an angle? Well, uh, then somebody who, uh, who maybe had watched a couple of live streams will think sweet could work for this. So we already got our profile, right? Um, let's now create a sweep. So let's go in here, create a new sketch. So we are looking, uh, and let me just show that sketch so I can see right down there. Um, and then we just create a line in some kind of an angle, doesn't really matter. And let's do a relationship from the, this point to the center there. Let's just give it some kind of a dimension. Let's make it 45. Um, so now we kind of like have these two sketches and now we could go in and we could use a sweep. So like this and this end and select the path and it's going to be a cut. But what you realize is that this line actually probably have to be longer because if not, we end up with kind of like a cut there. Okay, we can do that. So let's go back in and edit that sketch. And... Uh, I'm just going to go in and click on the point and remove the constraint I added. And then instead, I'm going to give it a length. So let's make it 25. It's get out of it. And now you can see that this, this is cut through. That's all great. But now when we go in and try to do the same thing, where we go in and we pattern this, well, we will pretty quickly uh, kind of realize that uh, this is not really necessarily going to uh, going to work in here um, because it's getting confused because it didn't have a stop point on the first one. It sees the first one is so cutting through, and now right. So you get my point that this just this is just a little kind of like dangerous. Well, let me show you the trick that 3D printer guys probably well I should say have never thought of, but if you, maybe you haven't. Instead of trying to model all this up, <laughs> how about using CAM for that? How many was yelling that in the live stream thing? 
check this out. Let's go in to the CAM workspace. Now, normally when we're talking CAM, we're talking about programming CNC machines, right? But that is actually a pretty neat trick inside of, uh, you can do inside of CAM. Now it's a little bit like through the back door, but if you're doing, wanna do like crazy shapes, this uh, this could be could be hopefully really useful for you. So this is not about CAM, uh, that's normally on Fridays, but I'm gonna have to show it because I want to make sure that the <laughs> that the, uh, the 3D printing guy sees this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a stock, uh, extra stock to the top of the pot because that's actually what's going to to kind of control the depth of this trick. And then I'm going to go in and use a parallel cut. And I'm going to have to select a tool for that. Now, I don't have a tool in here. Um, I'm just going to go in and quickly create one. I'm, and so if this is getting a little bit too crazy, just, you know, um, just bear with me uh, a little bit. Um, let me just go in here and do something like 10 maybe. Let's make this 10. Let's get a little bit of length on here. And we're not going to have a radius on. Zero radius. We were going to go. 30 degrees, flute length is gonna be eight, there we go. Um, so I have like a little holder, a little tool I'm created here. So you see they have a little tip on it. Now check this out. Let's go back in here. I'm not gonna select, I know my passes tab is probably crazy small. So we did a six millimeter step over. Let's just click on this. We get a warning, that's fine. It's gonna take two seconds to calculate and we get something that looks like this. Well, if we turn on simulate and turn our stock on and hit play, you will see that this tool is kind of going to carve out exactly what we what we had before. Um, what we were trying to model up. It's doing this without any geometry, right? Like the blog is flat. There's nothing there's nothing on it. Well, it gets better because inside of parallel, in the settings in here, we can actually say that we want to add perpendicular passes. So hit OK to that. And we can we get a warning. Don't worry about that. It's just talking about that the step over is a lot bigger than the diameter of the cutter. But for this case, it's not bad. Now look at this. We already created, um, created this kind of banner here. Let me just fast forward. Right? Look at this. We already got kind of the same pattern as um, as we had created before with with the pattern command inside of cam but we can actually go in here on the cam side and we can add a uh, pass direction on it so let's change that to 45 and now you will see that we ended up with Kind of what I was what I was after or trying to model up before with with the 45. Now you say, all right, that's all great, Lars. Uh, impressive with, with Cam, but how does this useful for somebody who's trying to 3D print this? Well, if you're 3D printing, what are you normally always asking for? STL files, right? Inside of Cam in the simulation window in here you can actually right click and you can say stock and you can save the stock out as an stl file so now i can actually save out that file right here as an stl file with those lines in it so like in three minutes i threw a couple of tool path on this part and I created something that um, looked very hard to model up, right? Um, to show you another example on this, let's go back into to, um, to our model environment. What if we create a sketch on this side and let's hit C for circle and uh, let's just sketch something up that looks like this here. Some big block that goes across here Again, inside of cam, so think about like if you have like some 
curved surface you got a 3D print on, we can go in here and we can apply that same type uh, of tool path uh, on, on this model here. Um, so if you have never, if you have never seen this before, if you never played with, uh, with the, the cam module before because you thought that, well, you know, I do, uh, I do 3D printing, so why would I ever? I'm just going to not go so deep. Let's go like that. Um, I, why would I ever bother doing um, CAM uh, inside a Fusion? Well, then, and you have a 3D printer, maybe this was, uh, was just your answer. Same thing here. Uh, you will see we got a cool pattern. Now, this is not a, re a rectangular stock uh, we have here. So we actually have to change the stock to save this out. So, and this maybe get, I, so this, maybe we should do live streams just further down the road on this, um, because maybe I'm going a little bit too fast here, but at least now you know there are possibilities. So I'm just gonna copy and paste a new body and then if I select that as my stock in CAM, so now I can select that, hit OK. Actually, I need to add a little bit of material to that, right? Because like I said before, the, the, the part here is, uh, let's add two millimeters to it. This body here is, uh, is what's going to drive the, the tool path and let's just regenerate this so two seconds let's try to simulate it and now i actually had the tool holder on here turn that off let's try to do that again so now you will see that in the end we get like a gnarly texture on from cam and then we can now if you are in the simulation space you can right click you can say stock you can say save stock and now you can save that out as an stl that you're welcome uh will work for your printer so um cam can be extremely awesome if you're trying to make crazy shapes like this versus if you um, are trying to model. So I hope that this is not too crazy. Um, I hope that this is kind of like useful, but I think that just knowing that you can actually go into CAM and you can actually uh, play around with the toolpath. I use the parallel toolpath in here. Um, just really played around with um, the 45 degrees and adding the perpendicular passes. I was able to create something that um, could make that neurally kind of, of, of service on there. Now, so that was kind of like, if you gotta make, and, and by the way, inside, be aware of that inside of Fusion, um, you can actually drive sketches um, with CAM too. So if you went in here, so you don't have to model everything. So you went in here and you started sketching, you know, a spline or something, that goes like in a in a strange kind of angle um, that you wanted to play around with. Maybe move around with the handles on that, make that really uh, swoopy or whatever whatever you want. That the toolpath can drive will drive that spline, and again you can now make some crazy patterns, um, crazy patterns in there. All right. So I hope that that was uh, an interesting little trick, how 3D printing guys can use CAM to make crazy shapes without, shapes without having to uh, model them up. The second thing I wanna talk about is specifically knurling. Um, and I should have a picture of a knurling tool, but normally what I know from, from knurling is normally using on a lathe, and you kinda like make that same pattern we just made, like a, a zigzag. So uh, Wednesday nights on Facebook, uh, we do a, uh, a live stream um, just for beginners, absolute beginners. That is Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern. And um, one of the things I modeled up last Wednesday was a screwdriver. 
and I got a question uh, about the handle if we could make that knurled um, on on that and I was kind of talking about the same thing um, in that live stream as I'm um, I kind of like here in regards to using patterns that knurling really puts a lot of stress on a pattern can add a lot of kind of like processing power to a CAD system because you got to calculate everything. Now, I will show you how you can model it up here. Um, but there is actually a couple of other solutions. So in the manufacturing world, um, we normally will just literally put a note to the face saying that has to be knurled because like, again, <clears throat> not for 3D printing, but for machining, you would have a special tool, has like two small rollers on it, that you press on the lathe against the steel and you will make the knurl. Um, so you just need to know this face, this section needs to be knurled. So normally you just put a note on it. The other option you have, and somebody pointed that out as I was doing the live stream, we can go in, we can right click and go into appearances. And if we example go into metal, aluminum, you will actually see down here somewhere, there is a knurled aluminum that we can now bring to the part, I'm just gonna place it to the face, to the face here, and you will see that um, it gets a knurled look to it, right? But again, if you're 3D printing, ain't gonna do nothing for you, but if you're trying to indicate a model needs to be knurled, uh, then that will, will work. You will also know that if you do the rendering, I'm not gonna to try to do that here because that slows down my live stream. If you do the rendering, that you can exit, there's a relief pattern and then you can exit, um, add supposedly add a bump to it. So when you render it out, the finished part will look like that there is um, kind of like heights uh, to it. So that's kind of like the two way that I would say in manufacturing, we've always done it. So in CAD, well, say in CAD, we always just add an appearance. That there is just a picture, by the way. Um, and then on a drawing, 2D drawing, um, a work drawing like the one I have hanging back there, you'll just put a note saying it needs to be, be knurled. Now, before I end, I wanted to show you how you can do, how you can model uh, it up and make it knurled, just like I did with the pen on before. Um, because some people's gonna be like, well, I still wanna, I don't care how many resources it takes, I still want something uh, knurled. Let me just get rid of this um, this appearance, the knurled appearance. So we're back to our standard steel are in here. Um, okay, and, and this one here, this trick, actually down in the description area of this video, I left a link. Uh, Paul McWorther, I think, I hope I pronounced your name right. He has a YouTube channel, great YouTube channel. He did a great video series for 3D printing. And, um, he, I think he, he did a, this a knurling in a pretty quick and easy way that I wanted to share. Because if you are an old CAD person like I am, you might be thinking about, um, you know, using again the sweep like we did before. And uh, you could then uh, draw the triangle on one end. And then you could go in and use um, project to surface and kind of like get a line projected down on this curl surface um, and it just kind of like looks like a curve and then you could use the sweep command. But this is what uh, what Paul did. Paul went in and used the coil command inside of Fusion. So I'm gonna click on coil and it's looking for a sketch to drive for. So I'm just gonna create the same diameter sketch uh, circle as my, my stock is here, hit enter. And you will see that um, the coil command kind of gives you a preview. Actually, I think we use this one too for our custom threads, how you can create custom threads in here. Now, um, we're gonna do a couple of tweaks to it, but I just wanna show quickly, like what it really would do is creating almost like a spring looking part here. All right, so it's gonna be a cut we're gonna do here. Um, we're gonna do a diameter of 50, uh, we're gonna do a revolution of 0.25. We're gonna make a height, 10 millimeters, and we're not gonna have an angle. We're gonna do a internal triangle, 
and we're gonna do it on the inside here. Um, so we kind of getting uh, some kind of a cut here. Let's just make this one millimeter. So we kind of get this little um, sliver created. I'm going to hit OK so you can see it. So we kind of have, I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of like what we did before with the triangle. We've created that uh, right here. Then if we go in and we mirror that. So we're going to mirror that and that face there over a mirror plane what's going to be this plane here hit OK now we kind of like have a uh, I don't know a wing symbol right here whatever whatever you want to call it now if we go in and do, do a uh, a circular pattern again selecting faces and uh, what Paul did was he was just literally playing oh, we're going to select an axis to row, go around it's going to be inside here that X is there uh, playing around with the number of um, the number of quantities you want here um, so I do 32 hit enter now we again it's the same problem as we kind of had before uh, with uh, trying to to pattern this is that we are putting some resources on um, on fusion 360 um, but you do end up with something and you can of course adjust all this something that does look uh, like a knurled somewhat surface and, and you know maybe uh, you can take a look at Paul's video maybe he made a little bit better uh, better kind of like step over um, like this but you can definitely do it just be aware of them as soon as you're in here doing the modeling portion of this that you are really putting some stress on here. Uh, we could probably, I haven't tested this out, we could probably actually have done this um, if we had used something like the multi-axis contour on this part here. Uh, we could have evolved this around and kind of like done the same thing we did before inside of CAM um, by creating the, uh, the, the cool textured there. So that was what I was planning on showing in, in this live stream. So let me just summarize because I think that that was, I, I think I maybe went a little too fast. So I talked about a couple of different options, but instead of have to model things up um, inside of Fusion physically on the model, uh, and if you're making like, you know, if you had to make this all the way down this long shaft, again, you just realize that Fusion has to keep track of every single face on every single intersection and everything, and it is going to slow down your system. Instead, you can kind of uh, cheat a little bit, go into the CAM environment, and when you simulate it uh, inside of the CAM environment here, and you kind of get that knurled texture in the simulation space, you can right click, say stock, and you can save it out as a, an STL file. So, hope that this was uh, hope that this was useful. Um, yeah, hope that if you have a three D printer, that some of this stuff maybe inspired you to play around with uh, with some different textures. All right, guys, I can see that Brady put in Paul's real name. So, I, if I butchered it, the link should also be down in the description area of the video. Definitely go and check out uh, Paul's three D printer series um for fusion 360 we appreciate it paul all right guys that's what all are planning we're gonna hit it on the 30 minute mark if you're watching the recording thank you so much do me a favor thumbs up if you like it thumbs down if you don't that's perfectly okay um and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel of course we'd really appreciate that and if you're sitting inside the live stream i'm gonna come in the live stream chat and just say hi to everybody so until tomorrow have an awesome Awesome day. Thank you, guys.